Hello, uh, I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. Today, I thought we'd talk about eagles, the bird, eagles. It's a powerful bird, and uh, we've, we've known about it for years, for centuries. In fact, we see it in the Bible. And so I thought we'd just talk about that today. There's a lot to learn from the eagle. For centuries, uh, the eagle has been recognized by many nations, kingdoms, and empires as the king of birds. The eagle has been and is today an interna international sign of freedom, strength, courage, tenacity, and authority. You know, you can just look at a, a, a big eagle and they're just so beautiful. I just think a, a full-grown eagle is just masterful. Men have uh, reproduced the image of the eagle on coins, uh, on flags, on seals, on emblems. I mean, everybody has tried to take that eagle and use it for some uh, reason in their own uh, lives and ministry. There are villages, cities, uh, mountains, lakes, without number, that use the eagle like a black eagle, bald eagle, white eagle, etc. So we readily see there's something very special about this bird. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 1 verse 10 because we may wonder why the eagle has been given such a place of honor. But as we look in Ezekiel 1 10, we see that God gave the eagle this prestigious position. Ezekiel 1.10 As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox, and on the left side, uh, they four also had the face of an eagle. So we see it had the face of a man, the face of a lion, ox, and an eagle. And that's in Ezekiel, and God put that in there. Now, let's go to Revelation 4. Revelation 4, verse 7. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Once again, we see on the, in the last book of the Bible, he's still talking about eagles. The, beast, the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Now, uh, let's also go, let's see. Wait a minute. Why, why the eagle, more than any other bird, uh, portrays God, his strength, his beauty, his tenderness, and majesty, and fearlessness. Uh, like I say, when I look at a beautiful eagle, I am just, I can almost be in awe of them. They're so gorgeous. Their eyes and their, everything about them is beautiful, absolutely. Let's go to, Revel now let's see, we're in Revelation now. Uh, let's go to Exodus 9, second book of the Bible. Go from the last book to the second book. Exodus 19, 4. Exodus 19, verse 4. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. He's talking about the eagle in Exodus, and he said, God makes an analogy of the eagle and himself. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you up on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. You know, uh, in 33 places, I believe it is, in Scripture, God speaks of man having the attributes of an eagle. I don't know about you, but I just think that's wonderful. I just think I want all those traits in me. I really, really do. Let's go now to Isaiah. Isaiah 40, 
29, and uh, let's see, Isaiah 40, 29, and 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Praise be to God. So God makes an analogy of the eagle and himself, and, uh, and then he talks about him giving us power, giving power to the faint. He giveth power to the faint, and to him that uh, have no might, he increases strength. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Now, uh, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Then they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. <laughs> Hallelujah. We must believe that the Lord is our refuge and overcome worldly fears that threaten us. And I'm telling you what, there's some fears out there today. But I tell you, if you know the Lord and you know His Word and you believe His Word and He's on your side and He's in you, you don't, you don't faint and you don't fear and you don't run. You do not. So in times of a major crisis such as, as we're in now, I mean, I, I would say it's a major crisis for America, uh, we must understand that spiritual strength only comes from waiting upon the Lord. You wait on Him, and He will be there for you to strengthen you, to help you, to be there for you in every occasion. Faith takes God at His word. Whatever His word says is what we do, and that's, what, that's the way I am. I believe the Word of God. I believe it with every fiber of my being. I confess it over myself. I confess it over my family. I, I love the Word, and when I pray, I pray the Word. Now, when circumstances seem to deny the truth of His promises, we can go to His Word, and His Word will absolutely put us over. It has me many times. Our ability to endure to the end will depend upon our allowing on the Holy Spirit to train us up in this kind of faith. The eagle's strength, speed, and maj majesty give him domin dominion over all other birds. We, as Christians, have been given authority to rule and reign with Jesus Christ on this earth. Romans 5, uh, 17 says, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign as kings in life through the one Christ Jesus. Praise be to God. So, the eagle uh, soaring through the air has an overview of all the things that are below him. He sees the snares and the, and the impending danger for miles around. He can focus sharply on objects. Have you ever heard, have an eye of an eagle? That's because they can focus from miles high on objects. Giving him the ability to find food quickly. Uh, and likewise, we as Christians need to be able to see things uh, in the distance and discern them accurately as we mature in him and learn to be led by the Spirit. I tell you, I love being led by the Spirit. When you're led by the Spirit, you know you're in safe hands because He's not going to lead you where you will be hurt, where you will be killed. He'll lead you in safe places where no weapon formed against you will prosper. God is all-powerful, and He's tender and gentle, the tenderness he has is the mother heart of God that's full of tenderness and an emotion that expresses warm affection and seeks to share the joy 
and sorrow of another. His tenderness is certainly needed in America today. Let's go to Ephesians 4 in the New Testament. Ephesians 4. Thirty-one and thirty-two. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ, Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So we have to be kind one to another. Our life should demonstrate the tenderness that God has given us to one another. And otherwise, we find ourselves being hard, bitter, angry, and unfeeling like the world. You know, I find that when I am not in contact with God or in His presence or reading His Word, I'll have a tendency for those things to rise up in me, uh, anger, uh, bitterness and wrath and clamor and evil speaking. And I tell you what, I had to put that away from me. I pray in the Spirit so I won't do that because God's not pleased with it. He said, put it, put it away from you. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and then be kind one to another. I think that's wonderful. Praise be to God. Um, now, God is all-powerful, and He's tender, and He's gentle. Our lives should demonstrate that tenderness. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves being hard, bitter, angry, and unfeeling like the world. I don't want to be like the world. Listen, I'm delivered out of the world. I've been, I've been out of the world for some time now. And I tell you what, there's no place like being out of the world and what the world has to offer. The world really doesn't have much to offer, to be honest with you. Now, in Deuteronomy uh, 32, Deuteronomy 32, Deuteronomy 32, 11 and 12, As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them and beareth, and beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Praise be to God. So let's, let's look at that a minute. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, and fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them and beareth them up on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead them and guide them, and there was no strange God among them. God is describing the eagle. This scripture illustrates God's instruction and training of Israel during their 40 years in the wilderness. Moses is reviewing those years for the younger uh, generation just before going into the promised land. Hallelujah. Now, one thought that you might want to remember, that eagles mate for life. You know, we say until death do we part. That's the way an eagle is. They literally stand by it. They get a mate and they mate for life. Now, the eagle, they build their nest high above the ground, uh, often as high as a four-story building. That's pretty high. High on a cliff or in a rock in a tree, and her nest can weigh up to two tons, two tons, and be four to five feet deep. She remodels the nest every year, removing twigs, fur, etc., and adding fresh twigs and rabbit and squirrel's fur. She does not move that nest. Uh, even and will live there for 50 years, if so be. And I think that's a neat thing about her. She stays there 
until she actually goes on, I guess. You know, that's what she does. Even if her nest is destroyed or half destroyed, she does not move. Praise be to God. She will not abandon it because the rough, the going, you know, got rough. She, she won't abandon it. The eagle is no weakling. They succeed because they are persistent and they persevere. Persistent and persevere. We desperately need those qualities in our life. Uh, and God will strengthen us by the power of his Holy Spirit. We must build that in us uh, so we can help others when they need to be helped. And uh, when they're unable to handle maybe some grief that came their way, they don't have the strength to handle it, you can be there for them to encourage them, lift them up, and put their feet in the right direction. They are filled with hopelessness and depression, and you can give them scripture from the Word of God that will build them up and help them to move on. Now, the living Word is the only thing that can change a person on the inside. It's the only thing. And they need to see themselves the way God sees them because He does love them. Praise be to God. If you've ever seen a picture of a baby eaglet, you've noticed that they're not very pretty little birds. <laughs> the soft white down on them at birth uh, is accented with black down around the eyes, uh, giving them the look like a raccoon, just little black circles for an eyes. And, uh, and they have awkward wings, feet, and legs, which are far out of proportion with the rest of its body. It's hard to imagine that those little ugly bugs, birds, bugs, birds, will develop into such beautiful, majestic kings of the sky. And they do. And they're beautiful. Now the mother eagle will uh, stir up her nest, compelling the eagles to fly. Wings that are strengthened in the nest must learn to fly. The mother destroys the nest twig by twig until the small eaglets are so uncomfortable they have to go. Now, if you go back to Deuteronomy uh, 32, 11, and 12, it says, An eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreading abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did uh, lead them, and there was no strange God with them. So that's what she did, that's what she does for the young. She flutters over her young in order to teach them by example how to fly. It almost seems like young eaglets might fall to certain death, but the mother stays near and is quickly ready to dart down, sometimes flying up to 100 to 200 miles per hour to get down there and place her body beneath them so that they can rest on her back. Eagles uh, literally jump into the air with some jumps attaining to 15 feet, 15 feet or more. Then with a powerful downbeat of the wings, the bird is airborne. An altitude of 12,000 feet may be reached within minutes. They soar so high, they're barely visible to the naked eye. In fact, sometimes ice forms on their wings. They have, been flying, they have been seen flying on airplanes. Now, let me read you uh, this about the eagle. Uh, I don't think I have it with me. I'll read it later in my, on my next show because I want to talk about, uh, talk about them a little bit. Now, an eagle will soar uh, above the wind of adversity. And did you know adversity uh, absolutely will uh, introduce you to yourself? You may not realize it, but it will. When you're in some kind of adversity, it'll introduce you for yourself. 
You see things that you didn't know you had in you, and uh, you see things that need to be uh, cast out. You need to, to do those things, and so that's what adversity will do. As an eagle will soar above the wind of adversity, uh, likewise, we need to do the same thing. As an eagle uh, approaches a storm front, it locks its wings into such a position as to allow the force of the buffeting wind to lift it. The force motion of the wind striking the wings at the right angle causes the bird to, uh, to, to, uh, to be uplifted and uh, allow the eagle to soar to new and greater heights. Rather than defeat the bird or drain it of its strength, the eagle maneuvers and glides about without any effort. It uses the force of the storm to its own advantage. You know, all the other birds will run and hide when, when a storm hits, but not the eagle. He will absolutely lift up and buffet it, buffet the wind and buffet those things and let it lift it up to higher places and greater heights. And they learn from that. So it uses the force of the storm to its own advantage. Hallelujah. Just as the eagle uh, shows the way to soar above the storm by setting its wings to make use of the power, God is showing us the way to soar above the storms of life by setting our wings of prayer and praise. Praise will bring him on the scene immediately. I'm sure so many of you have realized that. When you just feel so down and out and depressed, just begin to read the word out loud to yourself and uh, just keep on reading and keep on reading and then all of a sudden you'll sense his presence and he'll be there to deliver you and help you through whatever you're going through. But you have to, you have to praise him and read his word, bring him on the scene immediately. So cease from your struggling against the storms of life and rest in the Lord. Spread your wings of faith, prayer, and praise and let the Holy Spirit help you through it. You know, He's our helper and He is. We can soar above the tide of destruction upon us today. You can, you can fly and soar above it in the name of the Lord God. Praise be to the Lord. Just as the eagle soars above the storm clouds, we can soar on wings of victory. You know, I had someone uh, say to me the other day, ask if I was afraid of anything, and I said, no, I am not afraid of anything, and, and I'm, I'll have to say I'm not. You know, you can have a fear, but you can come against that fear in the name of Jesus, and it's probably a spirit of fear if it's so bad you or can't stand to go home alone or whatever. And, uh, and so I said, no, I'm not. I'm not afraid of anything because God is my refuge and he's my strength. And I soar on wings of victory because of it. And it's the truth. Now, the one reason that eagles were picked as our national symbol, symbol in 1782 was because it's not afraid of the storm. That's interesting, isn't it? The eagles represented power and majesty. It has represented power and majesty for thousands of years before our founding father chose it as our national symbol. Praise be to God. Then, as now, it represented a free spirit tenacity, and courage. Praise the Lord. The bald eagle cell was first used by President George Washington on a document which spelled out a prisoner exchange with Great Britain. Glory be to God. I think that is so wonderful to know these things and to know that God puts the things in the Word from Genesis to Revelation and throughout about eagles as well as other things, but he, 
He wanted us to learn about the eagle and see what the eagle did and when the wind of adversity hit them. They didn't run from it. An eagle approaches a storm front and locks its wings into such a position when the, when the, the buffet, buffeting wind hits it, it will cause it to be lifted up and it will absolutely uh, allow the eagle to soar to a new and greater height. So rather than be defeated, the bird or drain it of its strength, the eagle maneuvers and glides about without any effort. He uses the force of the storm to its own advantage. And I tell you, the more you learn about eagles, the more exciting it is to know them. And they, they're a wonderful bird. They really are. And God knew it too. That's, I think that's the reason he gave them to us. As an example, don't be afraid. The bird's not afraid. And I made him, put, put him in the word, so you don't have to be afraid either. So what we have to do is get in the word, read it, apply it, praise God for what he's given us and for his word. And, uh, and just like the eagle will soar above the storm by setting its wings to make use of the power, God is showing us the way to soar above the storms of life by setting our wings of prayer and praise. Praise will bring him on the scene immediately. He loves praise, and I don't blame him, I would too. If that's my son or my daughter down there having trouble and they start praising me and speaking the word to me, I tell you what, I'm going to be there for him, and I'm going to help him. And that's exactly what he does. So we need to learn from the eagle on eagle's wings and literally uh, rest in the Lord. Spread your wings of uh, faith, prayer, and praise and uh, let the Holy Spirit help you through whatever the adversity is. Glory to God. Well, I want you to always remember in His presence is fullness of joy. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221, or email her at Jeannie Caldwell at VTNTV.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1 888 641 3375 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet In His Presence.